Hey again. Today, I want to talk about tools, in particular, about soldering irons. Now, I do a lot of electronics-based projects, and so a soldering iron is a pretty essential part of my toolbox. And for many years, like many people, I used a big, old, honking, mains-powered soldering iron, like this one, to do my work with. These things are reliable and sturdy. I've had one since I was a child. Um, they're great. They keep running, and they're only a slight pain to sit around and work with if you have a long enough extension lead. Uh, what's nice about these is they have interchangeable tips. Um, you know, this one came with five different tips, different widths, different sizes of doing different soldering jobs. But sometimes you're just doing a lot of very small point soldering. And the eagle-eyed amongst you will have spotted in the last video that I was using one of these, a TS-100. Now, I am a pretty recent convert to the TS-100. I want to make a short video explaining to you why I like it so much and why you should probably invest in one if you're doing any kind of soldering seriously. So first off, obviously you can see the size. This thing is tiny. Um, and one of the nice things about it is that the heating element for these soldering irons isn't in the main body and conducted down the uh, point of the iron here. It's actually here in the tip of the iron itself. As a result, these irons have a couple of pretty incredible properties. Uh, the first one being they heat up really, really fast. And I'll show you that in a second. Uh, but the other, one, the other one is, if you look closely at the end, uh, right here, you will see there is two ports. One is a normal power port, and we'll get to that in a second, and one is a USB port. And of course, like all things in the modern world, the TS-100 has firmware. And even more importantly for me, it has open source firmware that you can download new versions of from GitHub, written by a couple of very enterprising people who I thank dearly for their work. So let's run through this soldering iron. I'm going to pop onto the overhead camera and show you just how fast it heats up, some of the features you get in that sort of online firmware, and why it really is, honestly, a pretty incredible tool considering its size, and as we'll see in a second, its power source. So you can see the TS-100 here on the table in front of me, and the first thing you need to do is give it some power. Now, unfortunately, due to things like energy density and safety and lithium-ion batteries catching on fire, there are not yet rechargeable, um, at least directly rechargeable soldering irons. So that means you have to bring your own battery, and luckily I did. Here, I have a nice big drone battery from one of the drones on the shelves behind me. Now, this is a 4S battery with 5,200 milliamp hours. That is more than enough to power this particular soldering iron for a good number of hours. It can keep a drone in flight for a good 20 minutes by itself, and that's a lot more energy output. The other nice thing is that these drone batteries generally come with a standard connector, which is this, the XT60. And handily, this soldering iron comes with this particular cable. This is an XT60 connecting cable for the soldering iron. So if you have one of these lying around, or you can buy various batteries like this, smaller and cheaper ones, of course, this one is a pretty expensive by itself, you can simply take the drone battery, plug it into the XT60, plug it into the iron, and then you go, the iron turns on. Now, of course, this is still has a cable. It's not quite as convenient as being completely wireless or cable free. But the cable is much shorter than your standard mains cable. It twists a lot more easily. And crucially, you can move it around. I can just take this couple of things upstairs to the garage and do some soldering there in place on some wiring in my Jeep, for example. And that alone is super important. There are also other models of the TS-100 and the TS-80 we'll get to in a bit that take things like USB-C power, which is even more prevalent, but there's a bit more wattage that comes out of these ones, so it's pretty great. But first, you know, let's get to the, the main show here, which is the severe speed of this thing. So I'm going to bring it back center here. So this is an aftermarket firmware. I'll talk about that at the end. But essentially, when it boots up, it's cold. You can touch the tip. It's perfectly fine. And then you press uh, this forward button here to heat it up. So bear in mind, this is coming at room temperature. It's set to go from room temperature to 320 degrees Celsius, which is a pretty decent soldering temperature for most solder. Uh, I'm going to press the go button now. You see the screen on the screen there, it shows heating up in real time. And the real advantage of that cartridge sort of in the end based heater is that it heats up really fast. I'm used to soldering irons taking a good minute or two to heat up. Um, I haven't almost finished this sort of piece of camera yet. And there it is, it's already there. It's at 320 straight away. Um, that is the sheer advantage you get from having this kind of size and integration of heating in the soldering iron. It's great. The ability to just stick it on and let it come to life and let it heat up, it's fantastic. Even better, sometimes you just want a little extra heat for soldering. This firmware has a boost mode. If I hold down the A button, it'll boost up to 420, like this. 
And you see, like it's a couple of seconds, it's already there. It's really fast. Let go of it, comes back down again. Of course, it loses heat pretty quickly as well. And that honestly is the main reason I use these things. They're just so fast. It's just really convenient. Even better, if you leave it alone, it has a motion sensor. So if I leave it idle for a good five, 10 minutes, and it's all configurable, of course, it will just sit there and power down to a lower temperature, I think it's 200-ish by default, to preserve some power and so it can boost up to 320 when it's ready. Of course, you can set the temperature. If I go in here, I can easily set temperature to in one degree increments. The thermistor on this seems pretty accurate and it heats up to the right temperature almost immediately. So it's really convenient for that sort of small, precise soldering. You end up doing a lot on small electronics projects. And that's kind of honestly why I love it. So let's talk a bit about the firmware. Um, as I said, it's got firmware, it's flashable. It comes with default firmware that has basic temperature control, um, but this is aftermarket firmware. One of the nice things with this device is that flashing the firmware is pretty easy. You simply take the device, you hold down the forward button, you plug it into a computer via USB, and it appears as a USB drive. You drag the firmware file over and the device disconnects, reboots and says, yep, yeah, I'm good, and you flash the firmware. It's incredibly simple and I kind of love when mass storage is used for firmware updates. For example, like on my watch here as well. So that's kind of all there is to it. Like it's a great small soldering iron. It runs really fast. It runs off batteries. Um, there are lots of different models you can use. Um, or at least you can buy off Amazon. The TS100 is one of those like names that encompasses a whole range of stuff. Um, but this particular soldering iron, um, I'll link the particular Amazon why I bought this one off below. But generally just find a well-rated TS100 um, or a TS80. I'll tell you about differences in a second. And you'll generally end up with a pretty decent version of the soldering iron, as long as the reviews look good and trustworthy and written by real people. So let's talk about the two different variants, the TS80 and the TS100 is what you'll usually see. The TS80 is the USB-C powered variant. On the back, there's a USB-C port to plug it into. And generally, um, those come in two different versions. An older version, which is sort of the Qualcomm Quick Charge, slightly hacked together power delivery specification. And then the newer ones, which are proper USB-C PD power delivery. It's the second ones you want to look out for for those. Um, USB-C PD is the standard. Most modern chargers support it. You can just take, a, for example, an Apple charger for a MacBook, plug it straight in, it'll work. And that's kind of what you want for most modern battery packs. So if you want a USB powered one, TS80 is the way to go. TS100 is the slightly higher power version. Obviously, you can get a bit more current draw through a direct DC connection than you can through normal USB-C. And so that's the one I got because I had the batteries lying around. They had that sort of standard DC barrel jack on the back like this that you can plug in. Um, and most variants I've seen come with a few different adapters in the box, maybe an XT60, maybe a different barrel jack adapter. And they all come with an AC power adapter you can plug into the mains on the wall and socket and try it that way as well. So you've got a couple of basically versions to pick from, but they're all pretty much functionally identical in terms of they heat up pretty quick, they have a temperature control, they have the motion sensor for like leaving it and letting it go to sleep on the table. Like that's kind of all there. And the firmware that's around, out there is generally compiled for both platforms as well. So you can generally do whatever you want to. And talking about firmware, that's honestly one of the really nice things about this platform. Not only is it a pretty decent soldering iron by itself when it comes out of the box, but the third party firmware really brings it to life. Um, things like the boost mode, that's in the new firmware. Um, you can customize the sleep timers, you can do all manner of things. If you want to, you can put custom boot logos in. Um, one key feature I do love is I've told this exactly what kind of battery it's talking to, a 4S drone battery. And so it can read the voltage, it gives me a proper little battery meter on the main screen that tells me how much battery you've got left, which of course by default it can't do. So it doesn't know what source you're pulling from, thus doesn't know what the voltage means. So it's a really wonderful versatile device. And you know, I recommend it to both hobbyists new and hobbyists who've been doing this for a long time, right? Like it's a great entry level device. They're pretty cheap. They power off a whole load of sources. And honestly, it will do a lot for you in doing small hobbyist projects or getting your first bit of soldering going. And if you've been doing this for a long time, like I have, like the sheer speed this thing heats up, the portability, the ability to take your soldering iron to the project rather than bring the project to the soldering iron or at least to the place where you can plug it in is a huge advantage. I do a lot of work on my Jeep's electrical system, for example, and being able to go up there and like patch the wires in place for my sort of outside lights rather than unhooking the whole harness and bringing it down here to solder it or even yanking it out somewhere else in the garage is a huge advantage. 
So yeah, you know, I basically love this thing. It's changed in the last couple of months my, uh, my soldering life, as it were, and uh, I highly recommend them. So yeah, I'll, I'll link the one I bought this from in the link below, but honestly, as long as you find a reputable, reputable source, I'd go with any of them. They seem pretty good. And yeah, go out there, enjoy soldering, enjoy quick heating, and I'll see you next time.